Mr. Transformers 76 here for another video review. This time we're going to be talking about a newly shown Hot Toys product, and it is uh, from the Mandalorian Season 2 Ahsoka Tano. I'm um, so very excited. This is one that, like, clearly they were going to do. Um, they took their time, unfortunately, though. It took a while to get this figure on pre-order, as the show's been done for, like, six months now. <laughs> Um, but nonetheless, I'm very excited to see them uh, finally do the figure. Uh, this is a character that um, I love from the Clone Wars, as does everyone. Uh, so to have her live action debut, um, that was very special. So now to get a Hot Toys version is great as well. Um, so let's talk about it. So overall, figure wise, it, it's it's fantastic. I think I, I really enjoy it. I think that the head sculpt is quite solid um, with. Uh, a character with so much makeup on and not really having to do like hair, like obviously her, um, I don't know what you'd call that, her, her tentacle type hair pieces, very easy to do as far as like looking accurate, um, you know, it, the face sculpt itself, it all, it, it's a very easy face sculpt is what I'm trying to say basically. They've got a much easier job this time because of the heavy makeup and the lack of like actually having to do the hair. Um, so I think that the sculpt itself when it comes to the face is pretty spot on. Um, I think, particularly from like an angle looking slightly down, it looks really good. And even from the side, it looks fantastic too. I, I, I'm. I really like the head sculpt. I think it's very solid. Um, Expression-wise, it's pretty good, too. It's stern. It's pretty standard, but um, it has that seriousness that uh, I think is quite good. And this is a DX figure, which is great because it has the moving eyes. I absolutely love the moving eyes, and they utilize it quite well in these photos. Um, so... I'm, I'm trying to think if we've had any... Oh, we have. Okay, I, I was thinking maybe this was our first uh, DX figure that holds lightsabers, but no, we've had others in the past. Um, so I think that, uh, you know, with, with the moving eyes, you can really exaggerate and do uh, very realistic poses when it comes to the lightsaber fighting, which is great. Um, the overall costume, I think, looks really good, too. She wears very baggy pants, as you can see, so articulation should be very strong when it comes to the lower half, the legs. Um, now, my big question is the arms. I, you know, if you see me talk about other figures like this, I am not a fan of rubber joints. I much prefer to actually just physically show the joint, um, and I did not think that we were going to have any issues with rubber on this character because the elbows are covered um but because the shoulders are bare they did uh decide to do a rubber shoulders which means that quite possibly the uh, elbows are rubber too even though they're not visible um so that's very disappointing uh, for multiple reasons rubber just you know really restricts articulation you barely get any range of it and then you know, to get any decent range, you have to really stress that rubber too, which is, you know, not going to hold up um, after so many years. It'll deteriorate. So, overall, I'm not a fan that they went with uh, rubber shoulders. I'm disappointed with that. I think that you know, I, I understand why they do it for the elbows, even though I don't prefer it. I understand why they do it because the elbow joints are pretty obtrusive. It's hard to do like a subtle elbow joint. So I get their their desire to do it there. But on the shoulder, it's very easy. You just have the one cut for the for the shoulder joint. It's it's not bad looking to be honest it, it, it's completely fine so I would have much preferred that unfortunately though they went with the rubber so um, it remains to be seen what the elbows are like if they're rubber or not but the shoulders definitely are which is disappointing so could see some deterioration there now she does come with a cloak so if that ever happens you can display her with the cloak on but I don't know about you I think she looks so much better without the cloak so I would you know other than like a picture or two I'd much rather not use the cloak uh, so I'm hoping that her her shoulders don't deteriorate too much. Um, but overall, I think that the actual costume of the figure looks great. I do like how the cloak is so tattered. It looks like it is kind of like the one that she wears, you know, in the Clone Wars, like especially the final episode. Um, so it looks like she's just been holding on to it for so long, which is very cool. As far as the accessory, uh, now there's two different versions of this. There's a standard release, um, Although, of course, they're both DX, but there's a standard release, and then there's one with Grogu. Uh, so the one with Grogu includes a little Grogu. It comes with a light, it comes with an element base, and a backdrop. Um, overall, it's not much new, because the Grogu, from what I can see, I think it's the same one that comes with the Mandalorian. I don't see anything different on it. If there is anything different, it's maybe the arm is slightly higher posed or something like that. It's basically nothing. So if you have the Mandalorian, which I do, you basically have the Grogu already. There's no use for this one. Um, the light, I think that that's a neat light lantern. I think that that looks cool. Uh, the element base is um, 
is okay. It's it's very small. Like you look at it up here, it looks okay. But when you actually look at her standing on it, she has enough room to put one foot on the other side, and then there's like no room on this side. So I'm I'm not huge on that element base. And then the backdrop is nice. However, you do get a backdrop with the standard release. It's just a different backdrop. Um, I don't know if it's included, if it's gonna be like printed on the back of this backdrop or what. I don't know if you just don't get it if you buy the deluxe version or not. Uh, the standard release though, here we are. So yeah, so it comes with this. So it's more the town that she's in, while the other one's the forest on the outskirts of the town. So that's the difference when it comes to the um, uh, the actual uh, backdrops. And then the base that's different, and who knows? I mean, the other one doesn't picture it, so you probably don't get it, but uh, there is a standard base that comes with the standard release. And the standard base I actually really like, it's the stone... Um, bridge that she fights uh, on at the end of that episode and below uh, like next to that the, the little piece that she's standing on is like a little water effect with the nameplate so it's really meant to be like that scene which I think is very cool if you got like a couple of those you can line them up and like actually make it look like a bridge that would be pretty fantastic to be honest I kind of want to do that now um, but anyway I think that this base I like this base better and the backdrop I um, to be honest, I don't love either of them. They're fine. They're just, they're very, like, very faded. It's very hard to kind of make out what's going on. Nor is this location, like, super iconic or anything like that. So the backdrops are like, uh, I don't really care. I could go with either one. But when it comes to the base, I'd actually prefer this base. Um, so for me personally... If I do get this, um, I would definitely go with the standard Ahsoka. It's just more worth it. And kind of, oh, the other accessories, very few accessories. Uh, you know, she comes with the cloak, um, the base slash backdrop, very small amount of hands, and then her two lightsabers. Uh, I assume that she comes with a regular blade and then a wider blade for both of them, but they don't have it pictured. But I assume that that's the case because usually that's what happens. So I, her accessories are fine if this was a standard release, but as a DX, DX are usually known for an extensive amount of accessories or like some larger accessory you know like a, for instance the solo Darth Maul um, his, he comes with a whole stool you know it's kind of a larger accessory so I think that she is lacking on accessories for a DX figure um, standard release it's fine but for DX she's definitely lacking so you know had the other stuff been released as part of just the standard DX set, it might have felt a little bit more like a DX, but even that stuff I don't think is very good. Um, the details as far as kind of the release and price of the figure, so the standard uh, release is 285 the deluxe is $315. Uh, so you're looking at a $30 difference. So the difference isn't very much if you don't have Grogu. I say go with the, the deluxe, um, even though... I like the base more on the standard. Getting Grogu and, and that extra stuff for $30 isn't too bad. Um, but if you have Grogu, I really don't see any reason for the other stuff unless you're uh, really into that lantern, I guess. Um, so $285 for her... It's, it's pretty standard for what they're doing for the Mandalorian. Um, when I first saw it, the first figure that was released at that price was Boba, the standard version of Boba, 285 I thought that was outrageous. Um, I think that that's way overpriced for Boba. And then Bo-Katan came out at that exact same price. She was a little bit more worth it because at least he got a full head sculpt. And then now Ahsoka. Um, Ahsoka, out of all of them, I think is the most worth it at that price point uh, because she has a full, like, actually actress face sculpt. Um, she has uh, light-up features in her accessories as well as, uh, there was one more thing. Oh, the DX factor, so the fact that she has moving eyes. So she is a bit more upgraded. So the 285, although I just in general think it's it's a little too expensive, I'd like to see these at more, you know, 250 or so. Uh, I, I think that out of the Mandalorian ones that are 285, she's the most worth it. Second would be Bo-Katan, just because she has a full fit head sculpt. Um, Bulba's the one that's just killing me, uh, because he's just got a... a helmet head sculpt and it's not like he comes with any huge accessories or anything so he's just way overpriced in my opinion but there you go uh, the uh, release kind of time frame July to September of next year so quite far away but pretty standard for what Hot Toys is doing lately um do I plan to get it? Get it? I think I will. I'm not 100% sure. I like this a lot. Um, having a live-action Ahsoka would be great. She does have her own series coming out, though, so I worry that she'll have a very different costume in that series that might be the one that, you know, you really need. Um, 
but I'm not sure. I like this costume a lot. I think she looks good. My only complaint with this figure is the, the rubber uh, uh, arms. That's my only complaint. Other than that, I think that it's fantastic. I think costume-wise, it's great. Face sculpt is awesome. The accessories, what you get, I, I really like with the standard release. Um, so overall, I, I do really like this set, and we'll be seeing. I, I might end up picking it up. I'd like to see when that Ahsoka show comes out. We might know what she's going to look like in that show before the release of that figure so that could uh, be a deciding factor for me whether I hold off for a, a second version or if I go for this one but it looks pretty great. So there you go, that's my thoughts on this newly shown Hot Toys Mandalorian Season 2, Ahsoka Tano Let me know what you guys think and thanks so much for watching